one of the most common places we're going to see the mole or have to remember where the mole is not written is when we're calculating the molar mass. And the molar mass is again the mass in grams of exactly one mole. So it depends on the formula. So we're going to have to put a gram unit per one mole when we do this. And mass will be in the numerator, one mole will be in the denominator, so this will end up being a conversion factor just like uh, 12 inches equals one foot. So a conversion factor is just anything that's equal to each other. And we can use the conversion factor, the molar mass, to convert from grams to moles or from moles to grams. Grams is like weight and a mole is a quantity. So this is like to go from pounds to cups, which isn't exactly correct because a cup is a volume. But uh, this is not normally done. We usually don't go from how much something weighs to how many things there are. But this is exactly what we have to do in chemistry. That's because our formula uh, when we have a recipe in a balanced equation, the recipe is in moles, but we have no way of measuring out moles. So we're going to have to weigh out our substances. So chemists generally are stuck doing this. We're going to do some examples and we're going to need the periodic table to do this. So that's all we use. We use the formula and the periodic table. And so we'll see the mass of each atom written on the symbol for the periodic table. And again, that mass number that we're going to be looking at, I'll put hydrogen here. This number that's written right here below the symbol is what we're going to be looking at. So this is the element hydrogen. It occurs in twos in nature. So the molar mass of this is going to be two times the mass of hydrogen. And again, hydrogen weighs 1.008. And if we look at the periodic table, here's the symbol hydrogen. And if I zoomed in, we could see this was 1.008. So that's the number we use. So this ends up being 2.016. So the number is easy to come up with. What we need to remember is this is the mass in grams of one mole. So we want to write grams of H2 per, and then I call this the big fat one, mole of H2. So all of this is what we have to remember to write. For example, looking at the molar mass of H2O, Again, we have two H's, so this is 2 times 1.008 plus. We're going to add to that the mass of oxygen. And if we look on the periodic table, oxygen weighs 16. And so we add that to 16, and we get 18.016 and again, this will be grams. The number that we calculate is grams, and we want to put per one mole. It's also very helpful to put the formula there, grams of H2O per one mole of H2O. Okay. For sodium hydroxide, we have a sodium atom. Sodium weighs 22.99, and we also have an oxygen and a hydrogen. So if I put the symbol for sodium here, and if we looked on the periodic table, we would see 22.99. That's the mass of one mole of sodium. So this is 22.99 plus, remember oxygen weighed 16, so oxygen uh, from the periodic table, that's where that comes from, and there's only one hydrogen. 
1.008, and I gotta put this number in the calculator. When we add that up, we get 39.998. And we can generally leave three decimal places here. And this would be grams of sodium hydroxide per one mole of sodium hydroxide. So again, the molar mass is supposed to look like a conversion factor. Calcium hydroxide, if we come up with a molar mass for calcium, hydroxide calcium weighs 40.08. So again, we see that on the periodic table. So there's one calcium. And this two outside the parentheses goes with everything inside. So there are two oxygens, so this is 2 times 16 plus 2 times 1.008 because there are also two hydrogens. So this is the number that comes off the oxygen atom from the periodic table and again that number comes from the hydrogen. So we use the calculator, come up with that number. And we get 74.096. So coming up with the number is easy. What we need to remember to do is that number is always followed by grams per big fat one mole. And we should put the formula there as well. So grams of calcium hydroxide per one mole of calcium hydroxide. In the book, it might the molar mass might just be listed as the number in grams. So the molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.096 grams. That's the way you'll see the answer in the back of the book. The author is going to assume that you're going to know that the molar mass is always the mass in grams of one mole. So this is how we're going to use that. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of writing that.